Hey guys, in this video we are gonna see what if Naruto had all elements affinity. This is part 1, and if you want more then please leave a like share and subscribe for more. Let's get in the video. I want to run. At the demon. Don't let him escape. I want to hide. He's right over there. Corner him. I want to tear down the walls that hold me inside. Alright. We've got him now. I want to reach out and touch the flame. Boy kid, you're gonna die if this keeps up. Kill him. Kill the demon. Blue eyes brightened with intensity, glaring at all those who dared come near him. His muscles tensing, his whole body filled with chakra, rage was clearly felt throughout the street. I want to feel sunlight on my face. Yet, why? The mob were confused. Why was the face filled with sorrow? I watched the dust cloud disappear, without a trace. Some in the crowd left, apparently overwhelmed by the pain emitted from the boy, and guilt filled their hearts, making them reconsider their opinions and thoughts. I want to take shelter from the poison rain. But the rest of them, consumed by hatred and anger, attacked me. Hit. It's October the 10th, my birthday. Picks and punches rained down on the poor kid, villagers beating him from all directions, some even used iron pipes, and the Chuanans involved had gone as far as using brass knuckles. You bastards. Kit. Hang in there. Why? Why is this happening to me? You don't deserve to live you filth. Just because the Kaiubi is sealed within me. You're a demon. Or just because the whole village is too ignorant to look past the basics. Die. I'm just a kid, a seven-year-old kid. Some of the mob had turned their attention to the kid's apartment and began to vandalize it, destroy it. And they dare call me a demon. Foolish mortals. Should I feel sad? Should I feel hatred? Should I feel anger? They had broken into his house and began smashing up the interior. Yes. I should, but I won't. I will not give up. All of a sudden, gasps were heard and in front of them stood a livid old man, wearing a hat with a kanji shadow on it. I will believe in those that are precious to me, to save me and accept me. Okage-sama. We're just. Silence. You, you, how could you? How could you do this to a mere boy? How could you? I trust them with all my heart. Look at him, is he the demon you are so afraid of? Is that the state of the almighty Kaiubi? Look at him. I will overcome this. You insolent fools. Taking out your anger on a child and disrespecting the legacy of Yandame. Despicable. I will become Hokage and protect everyone. Take them away, lock them up for a week, and send the Chuanans to Ibiki for punishment. Strip them of their shinobi titles. Now go. Hi, Hokage-sama. Because I am Yuzumaki Naruto. And that was the last thought that came to mind as the blonde-haired boy fell into a blissful darkness. He felt calm and peaceful, something he had not felt for a long time. He had decided, ever since the old man told him what Hokage stands for, he has vowed to work as hard as he could to protect the village. This village. Hanahagakur. I will believe. Scene change. Where am I? What? No. What, what did you say? Stammered the girl with pale blonde hair. I'm not your friend anymore. Goodbye. Her lips quivered and she rushed at him, grabbing his arm, but why? Why would you play with me anymore? Did I do anything? I'm sore. No, you did nothing. Don't ask why. I just can't. No, no. The girl could do nothing as she watched her best friend dash away from her, running down the streets. She didn't understand why, and tears were flowing freely as she dropped onto the ground, on her knees and cried. No. That's not what I wanted. No. Where are you going? Asked the pink-haired girl, whom he had just saved. I can't tell you, but just remember, always treasure your friends. Come on, there's a girl that really needs you. Don't, please don't not again. But, but what about you? I want to be friends with you. The boy merely shook his head sadly as he ran off once again, leaving the dumbfounded girl on her own with another girl who was playing with the slides all by herself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Naruto-kun. Naruto-kun. Are you alright? The white ceiling came into view as his eyes flashed open, his breathing rough and his heart beating at a ridiculously quick pace as he took in his surroundings. So, I'm in the hospital again. He took in the worried face of the Hokage and the tense stances of the Anbu behind him and gave a genuine smile before calming himself down. Oji-san, I'm fine. Sandame Hokage breathed a sigh of relief. Guilt and pain tore through his heart as he remembered the desperate cries of the boy, begging for forgiveness and yelling that he was sorry. What kind of a Hokage am I if I cannot even protect him? Naruto examined himself and chuckled bitterly, well, looks like I'm back to normal. When can I be released? The old man sighed as he took another puff out of his pipe and replied, you're free to go anytime you want, but given the state of your house. I'm fine with it. Those words flew out of his mouth, causing shocked looks to be sent at him. But he didn't care. He just wanted to be alone for now. The guilt was wrecking him, and he didn't want to worry the Hokage over trivial matters like this. Siratobi looked at him, before giving a slight nod, alright then. But Naruto-kun, please be careful. And also, could you drop by my office tomorrow, there is something I want to give you. 
Naruto gave a slight grin before edging himself off the bed and as painful as it was, forced himself to limp back towards his house or what's left of it. The dog mask Anbu made a motion to help him but was stopped by the Hokage, no. Leave him be. But Hokage-sama. The state he is in, surely he should stay. I know, I know Kakashi. But what he needs right now isn't rest. He wants to be alone, he needs time to think and forget. Half an hour later. Naruto arrived in front of his apartment, ignoring the graffiti and the broken door. He made his way in and stared at the scene in front of him before he made his way into the bedroom. Gently prying away the debris on the floor, he reached under his bed and pulled out a small box. He bit his lips and slowly opened it, taking out a scarf and a fox plushie he got for his birthday last year. It was one of the best ones he had. He chuckled as he wrapped the scarf tenderly around the fox plushie, then he carried it in his arms and sat on his bed. Tears were brimming in his eyes, yet it wasn't because of all that he had been through an hour ago. No, it was because he had broken a promise. It. Naruto gave a sigh before placing the plushie down and got into his meditation position. Alright, I'm back Fox, what do you want? HMPH, this is the tone I get after healing your injuries. It was your fault that I'm even getting injuries in the first place. PCH, whatever. Look, I don't usually do this. But I want you to know that I alright, I sympathize you. Hmm. Just take it easy, Kit. I mean. Never mind. Never was any good at this kind of stuff anyway. Thanks Fox. I really appreciate it. Well, I would be dead if it weren't for you. Now, as we agreed, you shall now be able to work on your chakra nature manipulation. But for now, just rest Kit. Don't want you to overstress yourself. The old man must have something to give you. Might even be a good birthday present. GRRR what the hell do I care. I swear you've been rubbing off on me. Well, next time then. Bye. Wait, Kit. Huh? Happy 7th birthday. Ah thanks Fox. And with that, Naruto left the cage and returned back to reality. He sighed as he got up, knowing that he was going to have to clean this all up. And just like before, he searched out a snap broom and a dustpan and began the tedious cleaning procedure. Welcome to my life. Help. Help. Anybody. He don't worry, I'm fine cough. But, but you're, you're bleeding, and, and. He gave her a wide smile before slowly pushing himself up off the ground, really, I'm fine. He tried to make a pose, but soon stopped due to the immense pain it was causing. Really? Her beautiful cerulean eyes widened. He chuckled and nodded before asking her, you alright then? She quickly nodded, but that worried expression just would not leave her face, mum says that injured people have to go to the hospital. No, no. I'm, I'm fine. Nothing to worry about. He was caught by surprise when the girl hugged him tightly, shouting, don't lie. You're hurt. You're hurt. Yeah I guess I am. Reeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Naruto's eyes widened at the sight of all those scrolls in front of him, rubbing his eyes repeatedly to tell himself that it was indeed the real deal. He looked at the old man questioningly, wondering what the hell he was up to. Saratobi merely smiled, before ruffling his hair, go on, pick one scroll from each section. Treat this as your birthday present. All the scrolls here are not forbidden, and though they are pretty much C rank and above Jutsus, I'm sure you'll have no problem learning them, with the help of. Naruto gaped, are are really three scrolls any three. Saratobi laughed at the boy's enthusiasm, indeed, any three. But first, it can only be chosen by you, no help allowed from the fox. Treat this as a test. Are we clear Naruto-kun? Naruto nodded without hesitation, mentally reaching out to his tenant, Oi, Baka Kitsun. You heard that right. Yes, yes, I heard him. Now shut up and let me sleep. Naruto then grinned and gave a thumbs up, signaling an okay sign to the Hokage. He was literally giddy with excitement. Finally. One actual Tojutsu Kata. And Ninjutsu. Oh yeah. Saratobi couldn't help but chuckle at the boy's excitement. Just like his father, jumping at every opportunity to learn a jutsu. Naruto took a deep breath before going over to the ninjutsu section and peered over at the huge amount of scrolls laid in front of him. He had been taught by Inusan before on the basics of ninjutsu and had since found out that he had more types of chakra affinities than anyone in Konoha. However, that makes things pretty complicated yet useful at the same time. He remembered his words. Now, Naruto, having all five affinities is something extremely rare. I had expected wind, however, lightning and fire were the ones where I thought you might get, whereas earth and water were well, unexpected. But still, you have this rare ability to control chakra natures, thanks to a certain tenant of yours. The ability to mix the natures shall give you an advantage in the future. But for now, let's get on with the basics. Naruto almost sweat dropped when he remembered what Inusen had told him. God, he had spent an hour lecturing him on the basis of chakra and why it was so important. He was bored to death at the end of it and had never been so glad to get rid of the Anbu. However, he still learned a fair lot. He had come to acknowledge the fact that lightning, water and earth were underlying affinities that are hidden in a way. Fire and wind basically were his primary elements. He chose for a while before settling on a mid-B rank defensive wind jutsu, Fuitan. Kei's no Fukuman, wind element. Wind veil. He noticed the amused glance in the Hokage's eyes as he chose that one and knew he had made a logical choice. Hell, he should have. Since the age of five, Naruto had came into contact with Kaiubi and had the shock of his life. His intellect and reflexes had increased drastically due to constant mind quarreling with the stupid fox when the Kaiubi finally gave up in trying to act all nasty, seeing how this was going nowhere. Naruto chuckled as he remembered the look on Kaiubi's face. Think about it anymore and I won't give you one drop of my chakra when you need it. Ha. You have to give it to me, whether you like it or not. Seal. Damn you. Arg. Annoying brat. Meh, like tenant, like host. What the hell was that? Yeah, yeah, just shut up. I swear, one day, when I get out, you'll be the first to die. You mean it. Ha. I knew you didn't. Why you? Naruto snapped out of his conscious and quickly rushed over to the Jinjutsu section, not wanting to waste more of the Hokage's time. This part was fairly simple, he already had in mind what Jutsu he wanted. He picked up a low B rank Jutsu, Ninpo. Akaraka Jiseki, Ninja Arts. Clear Trace. Ho ho, just what he needed to help with his pranks. This technique allows the user to completely mask one's trace, as the name suggests. Technically, one becomes invisible, however, it can only be used for a short period of time, and though useful, one has to completely lower their chakra levels, making it quite troublesome to perform a jutsu straight after. This technique is mainly used for infiltration purposes. Hehe, <laughs> infiltration indeed. Hope the Hyuga stuck-ups enjoy it. But better not push it, Hiashi san seemed pretty angry after that last trick lucky he can't prove it was me. And finally, the long-awaited section of Tojutsu. Interestingly, there were quite a number. However, Naruto instantly caught sight of a Jinjutsu placed in the area. He raised an eyebrow in confusion, looking over at the Hokage, seemingly asking him what the hell is going on. Saratobi smiled as he watched Naruto figure out his puzzle. He nodded and gave him the go-ahead sign, wanting to see if he could dispel it. Naruto focused, just like Inusan instructed. Concentrate, blow off the surrounding chakra layer quickly, in one swift motion. Now. Hi. And at once, the Jinjutsu faded, leaving the originally empty table with a huge scroll on it. He walked over to it and inspected the title, Taikai Juusen Shaiki, Taikai Fist, 13 Styles. He looked it over, the scroll seemed old. The faded ink marks on the side showed that it was recently unsealed. Hit, accepted. The old man actually allowed you to learn this style. HMPH, good decision. About time too. Can't stand the way those bullies see through your punches erg. Naruto ignored the snide remark and picked the scroll up, no longer hesitating, and walked back into the Hokage's office. 
Saratobi motioned for him to sit and began, in a very serious tone, Naruto-kun, do you know why I allowed you to pick three scrolls from this library of mine? Naruto scrunched up his face, trying to remember, but in the end, answered with a no. Saratobi grinned, just like him to forget all that he did for others well, Naruto-kun. Hayuga Hiyashi has not forgotten how you helped save his daughter. At that, Naruto slapped his hand onto his head, of course. Hinata-chan. How can I forget? Flashback. Five-year-old Naruto was taking a stroll in the forest on the west side of Konoha, trying to digest all those ramen he ate. He was happily enjoying nature when suddenly, he saw a huge man carrying a small bundle. He got curious and asked Kaiubi about it. Kaiubi immediately recognized a bundle as a girl from the Hyuga clan. He then advised the kid to try and stall the man for time, whilst the actual Hyuga guards arrive. Naruto didn't even think twice about it and charged at the man yelling, put her down. You, you thief. Now that, coming from a five-year-old was as bad a curse as it could get. The Kumo Nin sneered at him and brushed him aside with a strong punch, or tried to. It had taken all of Naruto's chakra to stick himself onto the arm of the Kumo Nin. As the Nin looked stupefied at his performance, he took the chance to use a chakra-enhanced punch and smashed it right into the cheek of the Kumo Nin. Even though it didn't seem much, it had hurt like hell. Kaiubi had intentionally sent some of his chakra to amplify the power of the punch. Naruto quickly grabbed the girl from the Kumo Nin's arms before he smashed into a tree. He tried desperately to wake her up, recognizing her as the girl that was so very shy, one of his first ever friends to be made at the playground. Hinata-chan. Hinata-chan. In his anxious acts to wake up the poor girl, Naruto forgot one vital fact. The Kumo Nin was still able to move. Rain. Habana. Thunder element. Spark, instantly, a huge blast of electricity blasted Naruto off the ground, launching him into the air. Luckily, his reflexes allowed him to push Hinata out of the way in the nick of time. But then, he was in the air, totally defenseless. HMPH, teach you to mess with me brat. It's over. Raiden. Shijeki. Thunder element. Shock, and once again, as that familiar feeling of paralysis filled his body, he gritted his teeth and willed the Kaiubi to heal his wounds, if only temporarily, and with some difficulty, he managed to land back onto the ground, though somewhat awkwardly. He was panting and gasping for breath, yet he took out that kunai hokage sama had given to him as a present just a month ago. He held it in front of him, glaring intensely at the kumonin, as though daring him to take a step forward. His gaze was filled with life and determination that the kumonin stopped his onslaught. He knew those eyes. They looked so familiar. He began to tremble, no way, no. He's, he's dead already. No way. Naruto had no idea what the heck he was talking about, but knew it was his chance. Desperately trying to remember the correct way of flinging a kunai, he took one quick step forward and placing all his remaining strength into that one throw and whoosh. The Kumo Nin reacted just in time, however, the kunai still embedded itself in his right shoulder, causing an angry scream to be emitted from him. His temporary fear seemed to disappear and he roared, you'll pay for that. Naruto held out his arms, standing protectively in front of Hinata as he watched the Kumo Nin charge at him, full speed. He closed his eyes, as though waiting for the inevitable, when suddenly, a loud scream of pain was heard, and a thump followed. Naruto slowly opened his eyes, only to find a beautiful woman with long blue hair and pale eyes, without pupils staring at him in concern. He could handle it no longer. He fainted. Flashback end. Naruto scratched his head as he chuckled lightly, clearly embarrassed at his defeat. The Hokage watched on, amused, now, now, Naruto-kun, there is no need to be humble. As a five-year-old, you held your own against a 30-year-old Kumo Jounin for 15 minutes. That's an honorable achievement. The Hyuga never forget, be it those that harm them or those that help them. Till this date, Hyuga Hitomi still insists that you live with them. Naruto immediately shook his head, his serious nature kicking in, you know I can't Jai-san. I'll just cause them more trouble. Hitomi-sama has been very kind to me over the past two years, and even before that, she helped me whenever she could. Saratobi nodded, good choice, even if I hate to admit it. It will indeed cause them problems with the council, and so, Hiyashi-san thought up another way of repaying you. Look at that Tajutsu scroll once more. Naruto opened it slightly, reading the first few lines. Taikai Juusen Shaiki, combination of strength, speed, defense and fluidity. He raised an eyebrow and looked at Saratobi, expecting answers. Now, Naruto-kun. Hyuga clan specializes in their Tajutsu, Juken, gentle fist. That style originated from the style you have in front of you. Taikai. However, it merely picked the soft aspects of that style. As you know, the Hyuga clan deem themselves a smart clan, preferring technique over raw power, and therefore, refined several aspects of their chakra control, combined it with a part of Tai Kai, to form the Juken. Naruto's eyes widened to the size of dinner plates, after hearing that the scroll he had in front of him was even better than the Juken. 
Now, Naruto-kun, this scroll is dedicated to you, and only you. You may teach others if you want, but only after you've completely mastered this style. Also, I'm expecting a couple of surprises from you. Don't let me down. Naruto grinned and gave a bow, hi. Hokage-sama. And was just about to go before the Hokage stopped him, oh dear, I am getting old. You'll need this jutsu to help you. It's an air rank jutsu that's perfect for you. Naruto opened it, huh? Kage Bunshin no jutsu. Shadow clone technique. Indeed, now its uses are for me to know and you to find out. Get training young man. Ha ha ha. And with that, he dismissed the young blonde and sighed as he realized that he had to now listen to 150, possibly more, arguments, treaties, suggestions blah blah blah. With Naruto. Boy Fox, which one should I study first? How would I know? I had no need for your petty jutsus. All I required was my chakra and my chakra natures. All shall burn before me. Whatever. Are you mocking me, kid? HMPH, one day, I'll show you what I can do. HN, maybe by destroying you. Alright, cool down. Geez, just a remark. Now, which one should I begin with? Well, I reckon you should try the one that old senile just gave you. Sounds very useful. Try it. Naruto gave an unconscious nod before speeding over to his usual training ground, number 15. It was isolated on the east side of the village with hardly anyone going there due to its lack of facilities. Yet, the vast amount of space was just what Naruto needed. He placed the scroll down and began studying over the first scroll. Age Bunshin no Jutsu, A rank, offensive, requires maximum chakra and medium chakra control. Down in class. Whoa, old man must trust me to give me this one. But I reckon it's simple. Huh? One seal yes. This is going to be easy. I doubt a kit, you couldn't even do a single Bunshin. The FT, you just shut up and watch. Naruto quickly read over the instructions of how to direct his chakra flow, and within five minutes, he had gotten an overall idea of it. He formed a cross mark with two fingers from each hand, focusing, directing all his chakra to that specific point, visualizing duplicates of himself, before shouting, Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. And as expected a huge cloud of smoke covered the area, just like what happened when he did the basic Bunshin, yet last time, there were only sickly and frail visions of the clones. This time, whoa. I got to hand it to you, this jutsu is perfect for you. Indeed it was, for standing in front of him were two exact copies of, well, him. He stared at them. They stared back. So, you're me? No, that's my question. Hell no. I'm the real one here. Whatever. You're just a clone. Hey, hey. I have feelings you know. So? They don't last. Oh, you're going down. Try it. You're on. If there's one person on this planet that could have an argument with himself that person would be my dumb vessel surprising indeed Yuzumaki Naruto. And so, a very ferocious bar ensued, and amidst the fighting and laughing and fun the Naruto was having, he couldn't help but thank whoever it was that helped him so. The tears that filled his eyes were actually due to happiness, even if it was due to sad memories. He had gained something precious once again. Thanks. For letting me remember. What it feels like. To play with friends once again. Hey why are you alone? The girl asked curiously as she watched a blonde boy sighing on the swing all by himself. Huh? Oh, I you see I he looked at her, hesitating whether or not to tell her. Well? The girl smiled a little, putting on a gently expression as she waited patiently for him to answer. I have no friends. No one likes me. That's why. He mumbled, not wanting her to see the pain behind his eyes. He quickly faked a grin, but don't worry, I'm alright. The girl pouted and placed her hands on her hip, but you're not. The boy looked at her, surprised, what? Everybody needs friends. Come on. Let's play together. I'm Eno. You can call me Eno-chan. I'll be your friend. The girl smiled widely as she held out her hand, genuinely accepting the boy. The boy looked shocked for a moment before his lips quivered, you you want to be my friend? Really? You would do that? The girl gave an enthusiastic nod, of course. Well, what's your name? The boy finally smiled, but this time, with a few tears in his eyes as he spoke out loud, I'm Naruto. Nice to meet you Eno-chan. Kit, you really need to do something about this dreams of yours. Wokai will be what the? Yep, and you need to do it fast. I know how much she means to you, but can't you see that pushing people away is not the solution? I'm not pushing people away. Least, I'm not doing it on purpose. I'm not I'm not strong enough. I can't protect those that are precious to me. Well, then I'll just have to make sure you train harder now, don't I? I refuse to let my vessel drown himself in misery. I'll never live it down. Okay, whatever. But, yeah, should I up my gravity capacity? Well, currently, you're undergoing level 5. I reckon you could jump straight to 8 today. We need to focus on getting the styles right. Sure thing alright, time to wake up and get some training done. It's been two months since Naruto last got the scrolls from Sandame Hokage. 
He has currently mastered the Jinjutsu Akaraka Jiseki, Clear Trace, and he had been so kind to decorate the Hokage monuments, using that jutsu that even the Anbu had no idea who had done it. Kaiubi had done his part by teaching him gravity seals. Level 1 is the basis for all shinobi, meaning they train under normal gravity. Every one time you increase your level, it doubles the gravity field, forcing your muscles to adjust. Normally, this would be suicide training, however, with Kaiubi's healing factors, it worked wonders. No longer were there baby fat on Naruto's face, his arms and legs were much more muscular than before, and he had found that it even helped with his chakra control exercises a lot. Hage Bunshin had been an immense help. Naruto had figured the trick behind it very quickly. However, it was by pure luck that he stumbled upon the godlike opportunities this technique presented. Flashback. Naruto had summoned a Kage Bunshin to keep him company as he began his training. He would spar with the other him as he worked through all the styles of Tujutsu, one by one. Ryu, Dragon, Tora, Tiger, Kijuuki, Crane, Hibi, Snake, Shishi, Lion, Saru, Monkey, Washi, Eagle, Kajira, Whale, were the basic styles. The advanced section are basically the styles that mix up all the above mentioned into four more complicated and powerful styles, would be Ryuusei, Meteor, Suki, Moon, Taiyu, Sun, and finally, Tentu, Heaven. Ryu, Tora, Shishi, Washi focuses on strength and power. Kijuuki, Hibi and Seru focuses on fluidity, flexibility, technique and speed. Kujira focuses solely on defense, stamina and to train one's mind. Ryuusei is a combination of Tora, Washi and Seru. Suki is a combination of Shishi, Kijuuki and Kujira. Ayu is a combination of Washi, Hibi, and Ryu. And Tentu, combination of Ryu, Kijuuki, Kujira and Tora. Aikaijuus and Shiki combine speed and agility with strength and defense, totally different from the original Taikai Fist. Chapter 1 clearly states that to master all the styles would be foolish, for one's body can only adapt to so many types of trainings, and if beyond a certain point, muscles will contract and relax at the most inopportune moments and eventually cause the whole body to break down. The final four styles act as a guideline to show the combinations possible. And it is highly recommended that one trains in no more than four styles at the most. However, there has yet to be one to master the Tentu style, for within it contains the essence of all aspects of combat. And of course, Naruto, being his stubborn old self, immediately decided to train the Tentu style. And so he started straight away, carefully reading up the positions and ways to use the strength. Currently, Naruto had no problem with Tora and Kujira, seeing that his stamina was off the charts and his strength was good enough, to say the least. However, Ryu proved to be challenging as it used more than just power. It required precision, accuracy and above all, control. Kijuuki was even harder. Control was the main issue. Fluidity was okayish for Naruto, and speed was acceptable. Today, he was working on Ryu no Kami, Dragon Style, and his clone was helping out when he accidentally used too much power, smashing the clone into another tree, causing it to go poof in a cloud of white smoke. Naruto sighed as he walked over to the tree and looked at the damage he caused. However, before he even reached there huh. What oh, so that's why I blasted him off. Psy Control went off on that strike wait a minute. How did I know that? And then came the brilliant discovery. Kage Bunshins, Shadow Clones, transfer whatever information they gain during their existence to the user once they are dismissed. And this if used for training Whoa. Flashback end. And so, Naruto began. He first created five clones, getting three of them to work on the Kijuuki no Kami, whereas he himself and the other two continued to go crazy over the frustrating Ryu no Kami. Five clones became ten, ten became twenty, twenty became fifty. And in just two months, Naruto was able to efficiently train alongside 50 clones, gaining an immense amount of knowledge every time they disappear. The rush of information to his head was handled by Kaiubi, preventing the data overload from affecting his nervous system. It had sorted out everything as quickly as it could, and soon, Naruto found that he was on the verge of mastering Tentu style. And he wasn't exactly surprised. What's more, Kaiubi had informed him that the pinnacle of Tujutsu was to be able to use one's chakra nature to help him out. As for Naruto, Kaiubi had merely smirked and guffawed before telling the kid to leave him alone and hurry his training. Oh, surprises, surprises. And so, he trains 8 hours a day. 8 times 51 gives 408 hours a day. And 408 times 61 days. 24,888 hours yeah. That's a lot of training done in a mere 2 months. His usually crappy chakra control has been refined by Kujira no Kami to the point where he could stick himself onto surfaces and not slip. Now, that worked brilliantly on the Hokage when he walked into the office via the ceiling. His chakra capacity increased daily, and having the gravity seals on was just an added bonus in his training regime. The calories he burned off due to training he got them back by eating at least 10 bowls of ramen at Ichiraku every day. 
His allowance from the Hokage increases over the years until he is deemed able to make a living for himself, i.e. when he becomes a genin. There was one place, however, that he would visit quite frequently. The Hyuga Manor. And here he was again, back at his second home, as he would call it. He had just finished a day of training and had decided to drop in for a visit. The Bunky, Branch family, guards knew him well and treated him as an equal. Now that, coming from the almighty Hyuga clan, as Naruto would call them, was a big thing. However, Naruto detests the laws implemented on both the Soak, main family, and the Bunky members. In his opinion, the seal was just downright cruel, and the main family members have to train themselves to the point of exhaustion, just to make sure they do not dishonor their clan. However, not once did Naruto voice his opinions, but everyone could see his apparent disapproval whenever he's visiting. Like right now, as he passed by several rooms, the intense training undergone by the members could be seen clearly. It was unnerving. And how some even have the nerve to blame it all on fate. Erg that just totally puts me off. He had seen Hayuga Niji, who had ignored him from the start, determined that he, Naruto, was a mere weakling who had chanced upon an opportunity to rescue Hinata-sama and therefore had the backing of Hiyashi-sama, and it was all because of fate. Honestly, Naruto had never heard so much bullcrap from anyone since he was born. After that speech, Naruto could only stuff his fist inside his mouth to prevent himself from screaming out in rage at the pure stupidity and cowardice that this guy was showing. And the way he was treating Hinata and Hanabi was no better. He treated them like dirt. Manners, yes he has them, but his glare was enough to show that whatever polite terms he had used were totally insincere. He could not understand why Hinata just had to be so kind, and poor Hanabi, not even understanding why her cousin was so angry. She was still a toddler, yet already, she was beginning to train under her father. He had heard something about how Niji's father died, but never ventured on any further, upon seeing the hurt in Hiyashi's eyes. Naruto sighed as he shook his head, damn I think too much oh here we are. And sure enough, there he was, standing outside the room, waiting for permission to enter. Which of course, he got within a second, but that's beside the point. Come on in Naruto-kun. Naruto obliged and quietly slid open the door. Hayuga Hitomi was 31 years old, with long flowing navy blue hair tied up in a white ribbon. Her skin was silky white, something that Hinata picked up. Her eyes were kind and her touch was always gentle. She was the most caring person Naruto has ever known, besides Sandame Jison of course. She wasn't stiff and strict like Hiyashi was half the time, no, she genuinely cared about people's well-being. She treats Naruto as a son, and that is something Naruto will never forget. Whenever he had troubles, he confided them to her. She was one of his precious people, definitely. Hinata and Hanabi would follow close behind, especially Hanabi, who had taken to him immediately, grabbing his blonde hair and giggling as she played with it. Hinata was like a younger sister to her, and he swore that he would protect her if anything ever happened to her. One thing that never changes for Naruto is the fact that he always keeps his promise. And because of that, he has gained the trust of the Hayuga sisters and their parents. As he was indulged in his train of thoughts, Hitomi smiled and said, so, what brings you here Naruto-kun? He snapped out of his trance and gave a tired smile, well, something's bothering me. Hitomi knew that smile. It was his goddamned, life sucks smile. If you could even call it a smile. She sighed and motioned for him to come closer, before hugging him gently and listening to his woes. Naruto had told her before, those dreams he had. She and all the other parents knew the truth behind what he did and wanted to explain to their own children, but Naruto shook his head, telling Hitomi that it would just make things worse. The problem with Naruto is he thinks about the others too much. Not just that, he rarely cares about himself. So selfless, so gentle and caring. He wouldn't expect such quality in a boy at his age. Naruto-kun, why don't you accept Ino as your friend once again? I'm sure she'll forgive. No. I, I can't. Last time we were friends, those Shuinen were about to beat her up as well. I like her Hitomi-sama, I really do. But Aunt Sakura-chan too I, I can't do this to them. This is my burden, so I'll carry it myself. This is my story, and no one else can change it but me. I'll do whatever I can to protect them, even if it means that they'll end up hating me I'll do it. Naruto's eyes shone with such determination that Hitomi couldn't help chuckling at. He's so much like him like they said, like father, like son. Okay then, Naruto-kun. Well, do you feel better now? Naruto grinned and gave a big nod, yup. Arigato, Hitomi-sama. Hitomi sighed and gently tapped his forehead, how many times have I told you, there is no need to call me Sama. I'm not that old you know. Well, Abasan isn't any better in my opinion now. Hey. Aka Hitomi then took out a brush and began to gently comb his hair, Naruto-kun, I've always wondered what having a son was like. Naruto froze, his heart threatened to stop beating any moment as she. I would like you to become my son even if we're not related by blood, I would still like to be able to call you my Sachi, son, do you accept me as a sort of surrogate mother? Can I have the honor of you calling me your Haheoya, mother? 
Naruto began to tremble, he was just about to speak, before Hitomi spoke once again, no, Naruto-kun, I know what you're thinking. You told me once that you do not want to be adopted and that you like the freedom you have and I agree with you and respect your decision but don't you think that even the mightiest of birds would need to return to their very own nest to rest their wings? The ears were threatening to fall any second, he bit his lips, but but the council. Itomi shook her head, you are not of the Hyuga clan, they can't do anything about it, we can't adopt you, even though I've been trying for years to be able to do that but that doesn't mean I can't love you as a son now, does it? She smiled warmly. Besides, I'm sure Hinata would like to have you as a brother. Hanabi too. They adore you Naruto-kun. Hitomi now, come on, Hiashi, say something. Naruto whirled around, shock evident in his eyes as the leader of the Hyuga clan, Hyuga Hiashi was standing right there, smiling slightly, what is your surname Naruto? Naruto raised an eyebrow, before answering, Yuzumaki, sir. Do you have any blood relationships with the Hyuga clan? No sir. Have you been taken into our custody? Not that I know of. Well, then, I don't see anything wrong with that. Now, come on Hinata, Hanabi, say hello to your new brother. Hiashi stepped aside, revealing two girls who smiled brightly before dashing into the room and latching themselves onto Naruto, Onichin. Older brother, Naruto gave a slight yelp at the sudden weight increase on his body and fell onto the floor, with Hanabi giggling non-stop, cuddling him like her teddy bear, whereas Hinata merely hugged him gently and gave him a genuine smile. Hitomi and Hiashi laughed at the scene before them, especially when Hanabi began to plait Naruto's spiky hair. It was hilarious, in the end, Naruto had allowed her to do it. However, whenever his gaze met with the two of them, a mutual understanding was established. Arigato Kasen. We love you Naruto-kun, as much as Hinata and Hanabi. Never ever forget that there will always be ones who care for you. Never forget that. And even though it might not have seemed very special to the Hyugas, seeing how they were already treating him as a part of the family, Naruto had found something precious once again. He had four more precious people to protect and that made him happy to no end. So what do you say? Be friends with me? Ino-chan. Hey Arigato Naruto-kun, Kan-kan will you be my friend? Sakura-chan. Yes, yes I will. But not yet. I will train to be stronger until I'm sure that I can protect you, but for now, please forgive me for not being able to return your friendship. Chapter 4. Mayhem. Arg. Smash. Not bad but it still needs refining, I reckon. But great job so far. Your form and nature manipulation definitely came a long way Gaki. Naruto was panting as he eyed the damage done to the poor tree by his very own original jutsu. It was incredible, and he was proud, however, he knew that wasn't all. The jutsu had the potential to end up as an air rank assassination jutsu. The speed it requires to charge and execute was a lot faster than some other jutsus. Kaiubi had told him where his fire affinity came from. And since 8, where he met her, he began to train like crazy, doubling the number of Kage Bunshins he would use, now averaging around 200 a day. It was a magnificent way of training. Guzo arg, I'm exhausted. Groaned Naruto as he slowly sat down on the forest ground, resting against a tree, as his mentor grinned sadistically, Uo, come now Gaki, you don't want me to double your training regime do you? Naruto sighed, look, leave me alone for just two minutes okay? I'm not kidding. She raised an eyebrow, HMPH, seems like you have a limit too. But nevertheless, I am amazed at your progress, Na, Naruchan, how much further do you think this jutsu can go? Naruto grunted at his nickname and replied, I reckon I may finish it sometime soon, a few days maybe and don't call me that. She smirked widely, oh, is little Naruchan all grown up and independent now? Is he so strong that he can ignore his oh so caring Nachan? Naruto snorted, you've got to be kidding me. Caring. Right, you didn't seem to mind that you were throwing 50 kunais per minute at me when I was just an 8-year-old. And making me run around this crazy forest, trying to stop you from literally killing me, you can still call yourself caring. Yup. And with that, she took out another stick of dango and began to eat it, clearly ignoring Naruto's earlier comment. Naruto growled in frustration, if there ever was such a freaking annoying woman in the world that I absolutely have no idea how to get her off my nerves it would be Midarashi Anko with Hanabi and Hinata following closely behind. Erg. However, said woman was happily engorging herself in the pleasures of consumption and couldn't care less about what was going through his mind. It all started the year before. Flashback. Naruto was training in the patch of forest just next to the fenced-off area named Training Area Number 44. He had already got his Tentu style down and began training on his ninjutsu. His Futen. Kei's no Fukuman, Wind Element. Wind Veil can now be executed in the blink of an eye. Kaiubi is now guiding him through the ways of manipulating chakra nature, mainly how to control fire. Naruto was exhilarated when he managed to create a blue flame in his palm. He created a small C rank fire jutsu for himself and had even gotten the Hokage to approve it. He named it Katen. Shikaku, fire element. 
crimson flame ball, due to the fact that it was literally creating a small ball of fire within your palm, you can adjust its size depending on your control and chakra capacity, and let's say, you wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of it. Yes, and that was the start of his very own collection of original jutsus. He currently had two on the list, well, technically one and a half, but meh, details, who needs them. And so here he was, training diligently, trying to think of another jutsu that could help him, and that was when he saw two kanoichis appear on the side of training area 44, arguing intensely. From what Naruto could pick up due to his slightly enhanced senses, it seemed as though the black-haired woman was ranting about how she finally had the chance to get revenge, and how the snake bitch was going down. And without warning, the purple-haired female was struck right in the chest, and just as she was about to block, her friend had slammed a kunai into her shoulder, pining her to the tree. Naruto raged at the sight of that, he hated those who looked down on others, and he did what he thought was right, he charged up his shikaku and took aim. Haha. Didn't see it coming now, did you Anko, even the Hokage got fooled by me. All I had to do was pretend to be a goody girl, and he let me team up with you. That old senile. Now die. And just as the psycho was about to plunge the kunai into her heart, Naruto flung his fireball as hard as he could, right into her back. The fiery chakra ball detonated on contact and sent the Kanoichi flying into the fences surrounding the area, effectively knocking her unconscious. Naruto actually forgot to gape at his jutsu's power and rushed to help the purple-haired woman pinned to the tree. He had inwardly yelled at Kaiubi for help and the fox had grumbled the reply back to him. So he did as he was told, he channeled some fire nature chakra to his fingers and tapped multiple spots that Kaiubi had pointed out. The woman looked surprised at Naruto's ability to temporarily close nerve points to lessen the pain, what's more, the fiery feeling she got was oddly comforting, soothing her nerves. And when he pulled the kunai out, it didn't even hurt little did Naruto know, he had just learned one of the most effective ways of treating a kunai wound. It was Anbu class, and a definite knowledge required. Of course, it was rarely used in times of combat, seeing how you do not have the leisure to be busy tapping yourself when the enemy could be throwing more kunais at you. But off the battlefield, it was a necessity. The woman watched on amused as the kid busied himself in getting the kunai off and muttered, who are you? Why are you helping me? Naruto merely grinned as he successfully removed the obstacle and placed her onto the ground. He gave a sigh of relief before wiping off the sweat on his head, Inusan. I know you're there. And as expected, said Anbu jumped into the clearing and ruffled Naruto's hair, I swear you're getting better at this every day. Now, Naruto, I need you and Anko to come with me to see the Hokage for a moment. Five minutes later, he got the shock of his life. He had just assisted in an air ank mission. Him. An eight-year-old kid. Woohoo. The purple-haired brunette turned out to be a Takibetsu Jounin, special Jounin, Midarashi Anko. Inusan was supposed to lead his squad as backup. It was a plot to capture that spy from Awagakur, hidden village of stone. The Hokage had commended him on his help and said, Now, Naruto, a few days ago, remember when I asked you whether you would like a mentor to help you in your training. After receiving a very enthusiastic nod, Suratobi smiled, well, since you both met, I guess introductions are in order. Naruto's eyes widened to the size of plates he just saved his new sensei. Whoa. Yo, you did pretty well back there. What's the name Gaki? Uzumaki Naruto. Future Hokage. Oh, ambitious aren't we? Yep. Well, guess it's you and me now, you ready Gaki? I won't take it easy on you. No prob. Flashback end. And that was how Naruto came to add another precious person to his list. Midarashi Anko turned out to be quite the protective sister. Her ways of showing affection were unique yeah. Let's end it at that. All right, brat. Break's over. Now, time to check up on your reflexes. What do you say? Anko was fingering a very sharp kunai with that mischievous glint in her eyes and that sadistic smirk on her face. Oh crap here we go again. And indeed, the next few hours of Naruto's training need not be revealed yeah. Few hours later. Naruto was dragging his battered body back to his apartment, where he took a quick shower and changed into a clean set of clothes before setting off for the Hyuga mansion. Today was the day where he promised little Hanabi that he would take her on a trip to that little forest just outside of Konoha. It was Hitomi who suggested it, and Hinata would go as well, along with a branch member, Kareki-san, as an escort. Hanabi had been bugging him for a while, and so he had agreed to this plan. After all, he did need to relax for a while after enduring that torture session how can you even call that training? Crazy. Yo. Kareki-san. I assume we're all ready to go. Naruto grinned as he looked up at one of the strongest females in the clan, not to mention one of the prettiest. Kareki smiled lightly and gave a nod, before replying, Hanabi-sama is just getting dressed, Hinata-sama is in the living room, saying goodbye. Ah, here they are. Naruto Nai-chan. Boo off was the only reaction she got as she tackled her brother onto the ground. Naruto grumbled, geez, Hanabi-chan, you really need to stop this. You could have killed me. 
he grabbed at his heart in mock hurt. Mimi. Pouted Hanabi as she crossed her arms, trying to look like her father and failing miserably. She was just too cute that way. Naruto couldn't help it and hugged her gently before carrying her in his arms and setting her on his shoulders, okay, I'm sorry. Here, for the rest of the night, you get to enjoy the Sugoi Takibetsu Naruto Kake, amazing special Naruto view, how's that sound? Hanabi gave a squeal and glee as she made herself comfortable by flopping the upper half of her body onto Naruto's hair, snuggling in its warmth. For some unfathomable reason, Hanabi just can't get enough of Naruto's hair as it the shampoo. Must be hey. Is she sniffing Ryuau? She's pulling GRRR. Honestly, what is so damn special about my hair? Just then, a soft voice called out, maybe it's because it's so randomly arranged and spiky he. Kanbanha, good evening, Naruto Nisan. Naruto gave her his usual foxy grin and gave her a quick hug before greeting Hitomi at the doors. Kasan, don't worry, I'll protect those two if it's the last thing I do. He. Well, we're off. Just then, another male branch member appeared at the doors, along with Hiashi, just a minute, Hitomi-sama, I feel that having two guards is a safer bet, please, allow me to accompany them. I've already gotten Hiashi-sama's consent. Hitomi narrowed her eyes slightly before looking at her husband. She saw his gaze and reluctantly gave a nod. This guy's name was Akisu, one of the guys that Naruto hated instantly. And Naruto frowned at the new addition to the team. He gazed at Hitomi, only to see her smile slightly, tilting her head as usual, giving him reassurance, and that was all he needed. Hiraki didn't know Akisu too well, but disliked him due to his pompous attitude and his bad temper. He had been acting a bit weird lately and has always eyed the two heirs to the clan with contempt, why then was he volunteering? However, upon seeing Hiashi Sama's glance, she gave a nod before they set off, with her leading the front and Akisu flanking the rear. Naruto was right behind her, entertaining Hanabi and Hinata as they went. Now, the forest they were going to was special. How? Well, it was the place where the waterfall was the most famous place to sightsee in the fire country. It was beautiful, with pebbles glittering under the soft moonlight, and the soft whispers of the water were able to calm your tense nerves in a matter of moments. The moonlight silhouette added a mysterious feel to the whole place, not to mention that it was a great place to stargaze. It was chosen by Naruto, after some research and pestering with the Hokage and Hitomi, couldn't have been more satisfied. And as expected, Hinata and Hanabi totally adored their destination. It was gorgeous. Naruto had to admit, it looked even better than some of the pictures taken. Hiraki gave a sigh as she made herself comfortable under a tree, and whilst keeping an eye on the children, she too relaxed under the quiet moon. Hinata and Hanabi played lightly with the water, gently spraying each other a little here and there, with Naruto laughing and playing with them. It was tranquil yet, Naruto couldn't help but frown, something was off. Oi, Kuzo Kitsune, you sense anything? That Akisu guy he just ticks me off. HMPH, that tone will not get you anywhere. And I care because. PRR fine. I'm going to sleep. Okay, okay, I'm kidding. Now honestly, what is up with that guy? Just be on your guard. Treat this as a sort of mission and respect it. Nothing should go wrong. Okay then. Thanks. Did I hear right? This ungrateful brat just said. I take it back. Shame. And with that, he cut off the link and resumed in his fun and laughter. Akisu merely stood there, stone-faced totally serious. He activated his Byakugan secretly and smirked when he saw them coming. Oh yeah, it's time. Ha, time to die demon scum. Oh not to mention those disgusting main house brats. Hope they enjoy their afterlife without their precious eyes. He walked casually towards Kareki and pretended as though there was something behind her, hey. Look out. Kareki's eyes shot open and she spun around, only to feel an immense pain in her back as she felt the kunai plunge into her body, eliciting a scream from her. Naruto's head shot up at that and saw Kareki being punched right into the cliff beside the waterfall, temporarily disabling her. His sadistic smirk was all Naruto needed to tell that something very, very bad was about to happen. Indeed, without warning, a fist lodged itself firmly in his cheek, blasting him into the trees, making him cough up blood. Hanabi screamed as the guy that assaulted them grabbed her roughly and struck several pressure points, temporarily paralyzing her. The man turned out to be a Kumo missing nin, seeing how there was a slash on his headband. Hanabi. Hinata was just about to rush over when Akisu slapped her right in the face, before giving her a punch straight in the stomach, rendering her helpless as she kicked him away. Hey. Miraki. All done. Ha. That will teach them to disrespect me. Now, as planned, should we kill the her? Mumbled Akisu to the missing nin as he jerked his thumb towards Kareki only to find that she wasn't there. Scum. Yelled Kareki as she slammed a juken strike right in his side, before following up with a kick, only to find that it was blocked by the missing nin. Miraki sneered as he slammed his fist down on her leg, breaking the bones and using his immense strength, he flung her away. Kareki was doing all she could to not faint from the pain she was put through. 
this was unreal. A normal play trip transformed into an air rank protection mission. What's worse, she's on the losing end. Akisu activated his Byakugan and rushed in to challenge her. Kareki, needless to say, was subdued after a few strikes, seeing how she was severely injured. Akisu took out a kunai and smashed it into her shoulder, pinning her to the tree. Her screams were ignored as Akisu didn't so much as look at her, before walking over to Naruto, HMPH, Demon Brad, I finally get to kill you. Think of all the honor I will get. Naruto suddenly went poof into a cloud of smoke, and that was when Akisu knew he was in trouble. Take that. Yelled Naruto as he drove his fist right in his gut, administering Tora no Kami. He continued the combo with an uppercut, sending him into the air, before gathering chakra into his feet. He too leapt into the air with two roundhouse kicks, he bashed Akisu right in the head, and was about to finish him off when all of a sudden, Raiden. Rakurai. Thunder element. Lightning bolt. And before Naruto could even react, a huge bolt of electricity coursed through his body, sending spasms through his nervous system, totally messing up his coordination, not to mention it hurt like crazy. Naruto Nisen. Screamed Hinata as Akisu held a kunai to her throat. Demon. Either you let me kill you, or I kill her. Your choice. Miraki. Take that girl and run. I'm sure that someone would have noticed the explosion you caused by now. Go. Miraki merely glared, but did as he was told. However, before he could take even one step, he frowned, as a dozen or so clones were surrounding him, determined on not letting him go. Anabi felt helpless, she hated seeing her beloved brother in pain. What's worse, she was indirectly the cause of it. If only she had trained harder if only she hadn't pestered him if only they didn't come on this stupid trip. The tears in her eyes caused a wave of sadness to Naruto's heart. He growled as he yelled, Hanabi. Hinata. Trust me. I will save you. Or I'll die trying. Akisu inched the kunai slightly towards her throat, causing a tiny bit of blood to escape, his menacing smirk plastered on his face all the while. Hinata merely closed her eyes and mouthed, run. Pox. Done. Go wild kit. However, what surprised the two enemies the most was when Naruto formed a bird and a ram seal, and the purple light that glowed on the ground he was standing on. Ryoku Sumitsuki, Juuchi Taira, Kai. Gravity Black Seal, 11th level, release, and as the jutsu was formed, his chakra flared intensely for a moment, before slowly dying down, and soon, the same feeling of lightness came upon Naruto, and muttering the words, Shunpo. Flash step, he dashed off at speeds deemed unattainable for an 8-year-old kid. In just one move, he got right up in front of Akisu and smashed his fist right into his face, blasting him through the trees. The Kage Bunshins on the other hand, have successfully rescued Hanabi, and are now doing their best to contain the missing nin. Kareki stared in awe as Naruto handled the situation, it was unbelievable. Naruto gave Hinata a quick hug before charging up his fireball, Katen. Shikaku. Fire element. Crimson flame ball, this time however, he charged it to twice its normal size and with extreme accuracy, lodged directly onto Akisu, causing him to scream in agony as the flame engulfed him. The fact that Kaiubi's fiery chakra made up 90% of it assured his defeat. It was then that Naruto bit his thumb and smudged some blood onto his palm, Ninpo. Kuchius. Emerge from the shadows, Shinku. Ninja arts, summoning Jutsu. And answering his call, a medium-sized crimson kitsune appeared with his two tails in all his glory. You called, Naruto-sama. Shinku, I need you to immobilize him just for a few seconds, if possible, keep him away from Hinata-chan and Hanabi-chan. Said Fox nodded before dashing into the fray, aiding the Kage Bunshins. Naruto however, took the chance to rush over to Kareki and placed his hand on her leg, concentrating, Kareki-san, it might sting, but please, just bear with it. And slowly, to Kareki's amazement, blood red chakra began to seep into her wound, healing it at an amazing rate. She felt the energy coursing through her, she felt revitalized. In just a minute, her major wound was no longer bleeding, Kareki-san, I've tried the best I can, it's going to be fine for now. I need your help. My chakra supplies are depleting rapidly, and I have just enough for that one attack. Please, get Hinata-chan and Hanabi-chan when you have the chance, and quickly run back to Konoha first. I'll try and stall for time. You and I are in no real condition to be battling, so please, trust me. Kareki hated to admit it, but that seemed like the only solution. Her leg was cured, and she was ready to go. Naruto-kun, thank you. Naruto gave her that confident grin, before charging right at Miraki, getting his attention away from the two helpless girls, and using his Kage Bunshins, he got them to Kareki. Hurry, Kareki-san. And as expected, the clone went poof, disappearing due to the lack of chakra. Kareki focused immediately and sent one last gaze at the brave boy, before forming a ram seal, Shunshin no Jutsu. And in a cloud of smoke, she disappeared. Naruto sighed in relief as he witnessed their departure. Miraki too saw it and was furious. You brat. You just ruined my meat ticket back to Kumagakur. You're going down. Raiden. Kandon. 
electric shock, in an instant, electricity was emitted in all directions, promptly destroying all the clones. Naruto gasped as the Kumonin engaged him in close combat. He too, kept his cool and held his opponent off pretty well using the Tentu style, however, due to his rapidly diminishing chakra, he knew that he wasn't going to last too long. Just then, Shinku snapped at the Kumonin with his sharp jaws, buying Naruto some time. Back in Kanahagakur. Hokage-sama. Yelled Kareki with the last of her strength as she shunshin Ed into the Hokage's office. She wasn't surprised to see Hiashi there, as she knew they had a meeting. Saratobi and Hiashi stood up abruptly at the sight of the two unconscious girls, with blood all over their clothes. What happened? Where is Naruto? Asked Hiashi urgently, refusing to believe what he feared had come true. He's holding them off. He told me to bring Hinata-sama and Hinabi-sama back first. Please hurry, it's Kumo's Miraki. What? Izumi. Get me Anka right now. Roared Saratobi as he let the word sink in. Miraki Igram, B rank missing Nin, averaging between Hai Chunin and Low Jounin in terms of Tijutsu and Ninjutsu respectively. This wasn't looking good at all. Okage sama. What's the matter? Anko, I need you to follow Kareki san here. Naruto's in danger. He's fighting Miraki. Anko's eyes widened before she gritted her teeth. Hi. Kareki signaled for her to follow, and with that, they dashed out into the night. During all the ruckus, the girls have woken up and stared at their surroundings, only to find themselves pulled into a huge hug by their father, oh thank god you're both alright. Come, we're going to the hospital. The Chichioya, father, where is Nisan? Is he alright? Hinata asked timidly, whereas Hanabi began to cry. The ashy sighed as he stared at the Hokage, before turning back to his daughters, he will be I'm certain of it. Back with Naruto. Brain. Shijeki. Thunder element. Shock. Arg. Screamed Naruto as once again, he was hit by that jutsu. Things have definitely gone downhill since Kareki left. Naruto found out that the guy he was fighting had an old injury that was apparently slowing him down and tried to exploit that weakness. However, his opponent wasn't a B-rank missing Nin for nothing and had much more experience than him. All the attacks were nullified and now it was all Naruto could do to dodge. If the reinforcements don't arrive in two minutes, then I'm toast. Naruto yelped as once again he narrowly dodged the attack. Shinku was trying his best to help, blasting fireballs every now and then to help deflect the attack, but the pure strength of the Kumo missing Nin was overwhelming, even for Shinku, and he too, found that his chakra was depleting. The fox had sustained a fair amount of hits as well, and he looked ready to fall any time now. Naruto knew it was now or never. He had to risk it. Shinku. Grab him and make sure he stays in that place. I'm going to finish it now. And the fox leapt at the Kumo Nin again. This time however, he played smart and tripped the guy whilst biting him, using one of his tails, he wrapped it around his neck whilst his jaws lodged themselves firmly on his arm. Naruto formed the seals, praying to god that he could get the control and power right. He was going to use that jutsu, his second ever original one. The one he had practiced all day before this dreadful event. Tori, Ryu, Ohitsuji, Tora, Yuma, Yusagi, Inu, Ryu. Alright, come on. Naruto concentrated all his remaining chakra and onto his palm, the pure intensity of it made it possible for the chakra to be seen. He then manipulated the chakra, forcing it to accumulate into a huge fireball enveloping his right fist. It was a magnificent sight, his fist was on fire, literally, with the scorching hot blue flame dancing around his fist, it was crackling every now and then, and finally, he was ready. Arg. Shunpo. And in flash, he dashed off towards his enemy, the flames grown wilder by the second, gaining power as the wind spurred them on, his eyes roaring with determination as he appeared right in front of the Kumo missing Nin, fist drawn back, it's over. Keen Furia. Blaze Flare. And with his final strength, he drove his fist of flame right into Muraki's chest, melting the skin surrounding it, ignoring the armor plates he wore, burning right through his body. But it wasn't over, this technique was special in the sense that it consisted of two parts. The first was to stun the opponent where the second one was the real deal. Normally, Naruto would never use the second half of the jutsu, but now, he couldn't care less. He ignored the screams of agony coming from Yuraki, and firmly grasped his right arm using his left hand, and focused the flames into the shape of a blade, and aiming it right at Miraki's heart, he yelled, Haketsu. Reject, and boom. The flame projectile smashed through the enemy's heart, blasting him away as a huge explosion took place, Naruto's arm was jerked back due to the sheer power of the explosion, and he too was sent tumbling to the ground. He had done it. There was no way Miraki could have survived it. He gasped as his eyes struggled to stay open. He could faintly hear cries of Naruto in the distance, but he couldn't help it. Ah I did it. I protected them. The last thing he saw was that familiar blob of purple hair as he drifted off into the darkness, embraced by the tranquility of it and finally getting some well-deserved rest. 
However, that gentle smile never left his face and little did Naruto know that he had just taken a huge step towards the future. Wait up. Eh? Sakurai-chan. What's wrong? I I. What is it? Grinned the boy. The pink-haired girl blushed before shoving a plushie into his arms, thanks for helping me. The boy's eyes widened for a moment before shaking his head, I did what I should, there is no need to give this to me. Besides, don't you like him? The boy pointed at the fox plushie, all the while smiling gently. The girl shook her head, I want you to have it. The boy sighed, alright, but here, how about we do it this way? The girl tilted her head to the side, huh? The boy grinned before saying, I'll keep it as a token of our friendship, but if you ever feel that I'm not a good friend, I'll give it back to you straight away. Eve. Don't say that. Don't say that. Narukan is my best friend. You're not allowed to say that. The pink-haired girl cried into his chest before staring up with intense determination, if that's the case, then I never want it back. I want you to always be my friend. Forever and ever and ever. The boy just stood there, dumbfounded, before slowly, a smile took over his face, a pure naive smile as he held out his pinky, shake on it. The girl immediately did so, and as she left, the boy yelled, Sakura-chan. Don't forget it. It's a promise of a lifetime. I won't. Wake up Naruto. Wake up. Wake up. But the who's calling me? Odd, why isn't he waking up? Is that? Anko, calm down, the doctors are trying their best, all you're doing is delaying his healing process. Nichan. Nichan. I'm sorry. Are you angry at me? I'm sorry. I promise I'll never pester you again. Please wake up. Hanabi. Naruto Nisan. Oh no, Haheoya, mother, please help him. Then Tada. Naruto Kun. Itomi Kasan. Well, Kit, looks like you did find some people to care about you after all. But do I need to bloody kill you for using such a freaking risky jutsu, or do I just let it go? That is the stupidest dilemma I've ever heard of. You sure you're not going senile, you dumb fox? Are you trying to piss me off? No need to try you know. Shut the hell up. But if I do that, how would you get back in there? The RRRR you're pushing it. Alright, alright, calm down. Right, I'll talk later, but now, I really gotta go back. PCH, whatever kit. Just stay alive. Will do. Look, his eyes. Naruto. Indeed, ignoring the bright lights and the whiteness of the surroundings, he opened his eyes and started to get up. He placed his palm on his forehead, trying to sort out his memories. I remember beating that Kumo guy and then Anko came and saved me I reckon. At that moment, he was enveloped in a strong hug by Hitomi, thank goodness, you have no idea how worried we were. I swear, if you take those kinds of risks again oh Naruto her eyes were filled with tears, yet there were no sadness in them, only joy, pure elation that her son had pulled through. Naruto chuckled and gave a small smile, Goman, sorry, I'll be more careful next time. He scratched his head before saying, where's Hinata-chan and Hanabi-chan? Are they okay? Just then, the door flew open and before he knew it, two soft figures were already hugging the life out of him, Nisan. You're back. Were you angry at Hanabi? Was that why you wouldn't come back? If that's so, I'm sorry. I really am. Naruto immediately looked down, and sure enough, there she was, with her lips quivering, her eyes all teary and her expression just downright cute. He gently lifted her into his arms and hugged her back, no, Hanabi-chan, I'll never be angry at you. I was away because I had some stuff to do but hey. I got back as quick as I can didn't I? He grinned. Hanabi, upon seeing that famous foxy grin, couldn't help it but giggle before snuggling in Naruto's chest, happy and content that her brother was back. Hanada on the other hand, couldn't help but sigh at Naruto's smart way of handling it. She had been trying to calm Hanabi down for the past 15 minutes, to no avail, yet here comes Naruto, in just two seconds, made Hanabi all happy and smiley and for some reason, Hanada thinks it's not only because of Naruto being the cause of Hanabi's tantrum, it's just, his posture just reassures you in a way. Hanada-chan, Goman, I wasn't strong enough to protect. Don't say that. It was my fault. If only I had been stronger. Both of you stop this nonsense. But Kasan. No buts. Naruto-kun, you are not even a genin yet. No one expects you to be able to take down a B-rank missing nin. So don't go around thinking that you are supposed to be able to take enemies of this sort all day long. Are we clear? Hitomi gazed straight into his eyes, wanting to make sure that the message was sent across. Naruto sighed, before replying, yeah. Crystal. Hitomi shook her head and gave a sigh of exasperation before gathering all three of her children into a big hug, Bakas you're all my little Bakas. Even Hiashi couldn't help but chuckle at this statement. Indeed, Naruto was howling with laughter at the statement, little Hanabi was jumping on the bed with glee, whereas Hinata was laughing softly in her mother's hug. It was finally over. Na, na, Sandame Jai-san, where's Ankona chan Ah, she is currently worrying about her little brother and is currently interrogating the Hayuga stupid enough to fight her brother. 
She was waiting along with us for you to wake up, however, seeing how she really needed some stress relief, I reckon that maybe a distraction is appropriate. Saratobi chuckled as he remembered how much sadism Anko had shown at the mention of the words Akisu and interrogation, ooh oh boy, you do not want to be near her this very moment. Honestly, Anko is the only woman in the village to make full use of the words looks can kill. Akisu is probably wetting his pants this very moment just by staring at Anko. Now, Naruto-kun, I'm sad to say that I must take my leave as there are other matters that I have to discuss with Hiyashi-san. I wish you a quick recovery and all the best in your training. Ah, that's right, before I forget, please, come to my office when you're discharged. That'll be all. And with that, he ruffled Naruto's blonde spiky locks gently before leaving with Hiyashi. Naruto thought for a moment, before turning to Hitomi, na, Kasan, could you do me a favor? Hitomi huffed at the question, of course. Why would I refuse you? Naruto chuckled at her, knowing that she was trying to cheer him up, could you go to my apartment and fish out a box under my bed? There there's a fox plushie and a yellow orange scarf in it. Could you get it for me? Hitomi's eyes softened and gave a nod, okay, just wait a while okay? I'll be right back. Hinata and Hanabi will look after you, won't they? Hi. Two unanimous voices rang clear in his ears, and he couldn't help but smile. And so, Hitomi left as well, knowing what those two items meant. Naruto sighed and gave a yawn, fatigue getting the best of him. Hinata noticed it and quickly tucked him in, wanting him to be as comfortable as possible. And so, with a quiet thanks, Naruto drifted off to sleep once again. Aheyo. How are you today? Fine I guess. It's getting cold though, you sure you're wearing enough Inochan? Yup. Mum made me very warm before coming out. Say, Narukun, supposedly, someone gave you a scarf, what would you say to her? The boy thought for a while, before answering, well, I would thank her very much, but then, I doubt any girl would care that much about me. The girl seemed to pout, oh? That's what you think of me as well. No, no, no. I never meant you Inochan. You're the most polite and kind girl I know. Definitely. Come on, forgive me. He, oh Nerukun, you're too fun to tease. And with that, she whipped out a wrapped box from behind her back, Tata. Come on, open it. The boy's eyes widened for a moment before staring at the girl, for me. Yep. Smiled the girl. The boy lowered his head for a moment, his lips quivering, before his head shot back up, with that same big grin on his face, thanks. Inochan. Wow, a scarf. Orange too. My favorite. Now, Nerukun, you won't be cold anymore. Well, even if you still are, just think of the times when we were together, that way, you would feel better. That's what my mum said. Inochan, Arigato. I will. Whenever I put this on, I'll think of you. I won't forget it. It's a promise. And amidst the fun and laughter they had that day, the scarf was now the first ever precious possession the boy had. Marg what what the oh it's just a dream sigh, why can't I get those memories out of my head? Naruto muttered bitterly to himself. He hated it. All these good memories just made the bad ones stand out even more, eh? Ah, looks like I fell asleep for two hours Hanabi-chan, and Hanada-chan went home already with Kasan. Oh well, at least Foxy is here brrr it's getting cold, and with a swift move, he wrapped the orange scarf around his neck and cuddled the plushie to his chest. Yo kid. Feeling better? Yeah I guess. Oh, thanks for helping me out again. Appreciate it. HMPH, you better. But then, if you die, I die. Not much of a choice. Haha, <laughs> true. But it's not every day you get a nine-tailed kitsune to save you now is it? Keep dreaming and it might come true. You just saved me didn't you? That doesn't count. Man, Kaiubi, one would think demon lords were smart what happened to. You don't want to finish that sentence. Hey, hey, chill. Just stating a fact. Why you wait what was that? What was what? Shut up you numbskull, I'm trying to concentrate yep, that scent it must be them, you better hurry kid. What? What's wrong, not another. I'm just saying that your precious friends are currently undergoing some intense trouble there. What? Yeah, so should we go. Your choice. Stupid fox, isn't it obvious? Well, fine by me, I've strengthened your muscles temporarily as best as I could. Hope it lasts. Now go. I'll tell you the directions. And with that, the link was cut and in a flash, Naruto was out of the door, rushing down the corridors. Gasps were heard everywhere, and he could still hear the doctors yelling at him to come back, something about how he hasn't recovered yet. But now, he couldn't care less, he rushed out of the main lobby and out into the streets, and as he ran closer to the destination, sure enough, voices could be heard their voices oh how he missed them. At the playground. Haha. <laughs> you skunk. Dirt like you should know their places. Now bend and lick my shoes like you're supposed to. Yelled a big boy, literally, seeing how he was twice the height of that poor girl with that pale blonde ponytail. Shut up. Arg. She was once again pushed to the grounds, I won't let you beat me. Hang in there Sakura. Ha. What do you think you can do to us? 
Demon lovers like you should just die like the filth you are. Mama told me that demons should die, so if you love demons, you should die as well. Muttered the big genin sadistically. He whipped out a kunai and swiped it gently across the girl's arm, drawing a thin line of blood, causing a yelp to come from the girl. You know? Cried the pink-haired girl as she was trying her best to push off the boys who were trying to beat her up. Sadly, she was failing miserably. Haha. <laughs> Your parents won't be here to save you now. There's a council meeting right now, so no one will blame us. My dad's a council member, and if I said that you demon lovers attack me first like the crazy sluts you are, he will praise me. Now, should I slice you up one by one or piece by piece? That maniacal gleam in his eyes terrified the girls to no end. True, their parents had left them there to play with each other because there was a council meeting and their parents were part of the shinobi council half, whereas the other half were made up of civilians. They were just happily making a sandcastle when suddenly this boy just charged in with his gang of bullies and proceeded to attack them. He was the notorious new genin, Kigamaru, the bully of the neighborhood, however, because his father was a civilian council member, the other people didn't dare to punish him for fear of his father's power over them. And as expected, Kigamaru turned out to be the biggest ass there ever was, loving to pick on the weak, especially girls. He had tried to get those two girls to play with him, but they merely scoffed at his disgusting attempts at perversion, and so he was angry and ordered his gang to attack them. Sakura. She yelled desperately as she tried to get away from the crazy genin. She hated to admit it, but she knew that he would do it. One thing was certain, Kigamaru always gets what he wants. That was the law in the children's neighborhood. Anyone that dares defy him would get a beating or threatening. Only one person dared to stand up to him, however, that current person isn't here, and Ino was trying to think of a solution to handle this. Haha, why don't you use your special jutsus? You think I don't know about them? You Yamanakas and Harunos are no good clans. My father said so. You demon lovers. Die. And with all his might, he flung his only two kunais at the girls, seeing how they were cornered. He felt no remorse. They were just two bugs, ready to be squashed. HMPH, teach them to mess with the great Kigamaru-sama. Ino grabbed Sakura's hand tightly as she saw the kunais appear. They were cornered. They couldn't escape. If she hadn't been caught off guard the first time, she wouldn't have wasted so much chakra trying to get to Sakura, but even then it proved pointless, for the boys were just bigger than them and much stronger. She gave a sigh and looked at Sakura, only to find the girl looking back at her. She gave a nod, and both girls grasped each other's hand tightly, waiting for the inevitable, yet all the while thinking of how they couldn't even get to see their other best friend just once more. Splash. The kunais were right on target. They plunged right into the chest and blood splattered into the air. Now, that would seem normal to Kigamaru, however, not in this case. No. See, there was something wrong in this picture. One, it was a boy who took the kunais's hit. Two, he wasn't falling onto the ground, much less dead. Three, he had blonde hair and blue eyes and was wearing hospital clothes. Four, the boy was snarling at him. Five, he is Yuzumaki Naruto. The say Kigamaru was scared was an understatement. With Naruto mustering all the killer intent he could gather and directing them right at the bully scared couldn't even begin to describe the situation. He had pissed his pants straight away when the demon boy had glared at him with such contempt. One could literally feel the power and chakra oozing off him and the fact that the chakra was red. How dare you touch them? How dare you even try and attack them? I'm going to rip you to pieces. Snarled the Kaiubified Naruto as he rushed at the Dumbus who started this whole ordeal and gave him one strong punch right in the face, effectively breaking his nose and causing at least five of his teeth to be dislodged from his jaw. Not to mention the fact that Kigamaru crashed right through a tree due to the sheer force of the impact. The other bullies just stood there. Fear had them rooted to their spots. They couldn't do anything. It was just too overwhelming, victory had tasted so sweet if you could even call that a victory, and all of a sudden, their worst nightmare arrived. If you vermin even dare so much as touch them once again, I swear I'll make you regret it growled Naruto as he pointed to Kigamaru, now get that guy out of here and out of my sight or else. Did they need to be told a second time? No, they don't. So what did they do? They did the smart thing and rushed Kigamaru to the hospital, all of them trembling all the way and tripping over the roads and stuff. The chakra slowly died down, and accompanying Naruto's rapid panting, two simultaneous gasps were heard. Naruto slowly pulled out the kunais in his chest and for once, thanked the gods for having Kaiubi within him. He didn't dare turn around. He didn't want to see the looks on their faces. It was too painful. He took a step forward, but couldn't help but fall as the strength left his body. See, here was a perfect example where he totally forgot how he just fought a B-rank missing nin, plus a Hayuga trader, and is suffering from multiple injuries. No, I can't I can't face them. Yet even so, he couldn't help but turn his face slightly as he felt two pairs of arms hugging him to them tightly, never wanting to let go. Naru-kun. Naruto-kun. He could see so clearly, the tears in their eyes, the sorrow and joy deep within them. 
He owed them so much. I'm sorry I'm so sorry was all Naruto would say as he once again felt that familiar fatigue catch up to his body. SHH, you're you're going to be alright. Yeah, come on, you promised us you'd be fine. At those words, his heart was torn even further as he remembered how he had did the exact opposite of what he promised. He couldn't help himself, as much as he told himself that he was not to involve himself with his two best friends, as much as he reminded himself that as long as he was with them, they would get hurt he couldn't help it. His tears were running freely as well as he pulled the two of them into a hug, I missed you guys so much. He cried as he felt them with him once again. The two girls responded similarly and hung on to him even harder, for to them, it was as if this was all a dream. Never would they have thought that Naruto would speak with them again, much less save them. I'm so sorry for not being there. I'm sorry I'm sorry. Naruto couldn't stand it any longer. Never had he felt so negative in life before, but now, as he looked over his best friend's injuries, he hated himself for what he did before. He knew that no amount of apologies could possibly heal the wounds in the girl's heart. He no bitter lips before she ran her fingers through his soft blonde locks and bending her head, she whispered ever so gently into his left ear, don't worry it wasn't your fault as long as you're here with us like, you promised I don't care anymore. Sakura grabbed his hand and caught his gaze, the past doesn't matter, you kept your promise all along I knew you would come for us I never doubted you Naruto-kun. Their gaze, so soft, so assuring so comforting it was like the old times, Naruto would protect them whilst they did all the patching up for him later on. And so, with one last grin, he finally lost consciousness giving in to the fatigue that's been plaguing him for way too long. Yet the girls heard it clearly, and their heart soared as he whispered the words, I'm here to stay never to leave again. Thanks for watching guys, take care bye.